<laughs> Welcome to my 2022 wipe. In this video, I give my collaborators and partners and future partners an update on all the projects I've been doing this year around um, activism, property, and my companies. We'll also touch a little bit on what the plans are for 2023. Seeing as we're here, let's start with Wally Weir. This is the home of my water quality activism. And in 2022, we made some decent progress with our local water company, Wessex Water, doing regular water quality monitoring and publishing that to their app. I'm hoping that in 2023, more water companies will do the same thing, and that will lead to real meaningful action to stop them pumping raw sewage into our rivers. In addition, on a practical level, we're gonna be having six toilet cubicles down at Wally next summer, and the ice cream van will be back. I hope to see you down here for a swim in summer next year. This is Cumberland Basin, and you might remember that a bit over a year ago, a bunch of wild swimming activists and myself started swimming here to make a point that we should have swimming in our harbour in Bristol. 2022 has been a really good year for that campaign. We made a documentary about what they do in Copenhagen and what Bristol can replicate from there. And there was also a petition brought to Bristol City Council about being able to swim in the harbour. In that council meeting, every single party agreed unanimously that it was a good idea and it should happen. And now that Marvin's made it his idea, it looks like there will be progress next summer, which is fantastic. Meanwhile, my group and I, Swim Bristol Harbour, will continue to swim in Cumberland Basin to try and normalise the activity of swimming in our harbour. And hopefully, in 2023, we'll normalise the activity of safe, accessible, free wild swimming in our city. Skyline Park BS4, Bristol's newest street. The story goes like this. Jordan Tompkins, one of my colleagues, was getting frustrated with the post going to the wrong address all the time. So he goes to Bristol City Council who have a street naming department. This is two guys who are in a basement and their sole job is to name new streets. So when Jordan comes a knocking and there's a chance to name a street, they light up. And to cut a long story short, Jordan managed to negotiate that our industrial estate here is its own street called Skyline Park. So this is a place where creative, technical and engineering businesses can thrive and I'm really hoping that in time we can produce the next generation of amazing engineers and artists and creators to do great things in the world. If you're in the area, if you're in Brislington anytime, please get in contact, come on round, we'd love to make you a coffee and show you a picture. A little over a year ago, I bought this building. When I got it, it was close to derelict. The roof leaked, there was only two toilet cubicles, it was gas heated, and it was dark. Since then, we've done a full refurb job on this to make it an amazing place for the staff of Pitch to thrive and to push out some incredible work. Let me show you inside. The first thing we had to focus on was the roof. It was completely riddled with asbestos, so all of that had to go. And we've installed a really, really thick, high insulation value roof system that's enabled us to keep the heat in the building. Now that, along with some renewable technologies, has meant that we've achieved an EPC of A3. That is virtually unheard of in industrial properties. I'm really proud of that. This is a main prep space where the staff from Pitch can get the equipment prepped, working, tested, and roll out the door. Higher throughput of work, much calmer, much more organized, neater, and safer. So much better than the old place. We also thought about warehouse spaces. Do we want more racking or do we want some fun stuff for recreation? And that made us realize that that wall there could have been one rack or it could have been a climbing wall. So Dan Giddings kindly installed that system and made a route plan up there with an auto belay system so staff can come in the morning and have some rock climbing contests before work. We also thought a lot about the physical, social and mental health of staff. A lot of people might not have amazing kitchens and welfare facilities in their houses. So we thought we should invest in a really, really good kitchen facility right in the center of the building. This is prime square footage in this building. It's ground floor and it's at the front of the warehouse. Now most people would think you'd use that for an office or a loading bay, but we realise that staff welfare and interaction is central to the business. So we didn't mess around with this space. Five ovens, big kitchen, fizzy water tap, great coffee machine. It's been a real pleasure to see people come into this space and use it at lunch and tea breaks with some really good vibes. And even better to see guests interacting with staff. So that extension of home philosophy has continued throughout the rest of this building. Toilets have been a big part of 2020 as well. 
Um, when we built this facility, we thought about, do we have gender specific toilet cubicles? And we haven't, we've made them genderless. And across the building, we have seven cubicles. That's great for staff with all their unique needs, as well as our ability to host events. So with seven toilet cubicles in a building of this size, we can host some pretty large scale events. And I'm very, very proud of the design and fit out of these. Twenty twenty two has been a year of workplace reinvention. In a post COVID world, we'd have to think about what makes people want to come into the office. What do they need from a productivity point of view? What do they need socially? And the first floor of One Skyline Park is our architectural expression of what we think that is. We realised that people need a diversity of workplace spaces to choose the right space for the work they're doing. And this space is designed to be a thriving, noisy hub of creativity engineering challenge and idea friction. We've um, repurposed some more old aircraft parts. We've got some air source heat pumps, lighting and windows on all four walls and the ceiling of the building. And overall, it's a pleasure to work in this space. The staff are having a great time in here and I'm looking forward to the next phase of what we're gonna be doing in One Skyline Park, which is this way. Since we've moved into this space, a lot of people have wanted to come and share the space with us, which is, which is really nice to see. And that has inspired us to start developing Skyline Park Phase 2, which is this. The concept here is that we're going to create a bunch of dividers and glass walls for incubator spaces for various technical and artistic businesses. In this space here will be a communal meeting room space. The next one here is a smaller office for a creative business to rent. The next one is a content creation studio. Then we have a camera room, and at the back of the mezzanine, that's phase three, we're gonna have a large classroom training facility, which we wanna get all the people on Skyline Park to take advantage of. For me, it's really exciting to be building a bit of a hub where there's a real vibe, but lots of people sharing ideas, challenging each other's. That really fires me up, and I'm super excited to see how this develops in 2023 into being a really, really kicking space of productivity and artistic output. <sighs> <laughs> this is Pitch Air. You might have heard the story. It's a Boeing 727 that we bought from a scrap yard, dragged down the motorway, blocked the traffic. But this year, we've moved things up a bit. We got three artists to put street art on it. Hassan Camel, Harriet Wood, and Curtis Hilton spent a week back in April doing this to us. The idea was to make this a contribution to Bristol's already awesome street art scene. And it's been a real pleasure to see tourists and Instagrammers come around and take selfies of themselves in front of the plane and host so many events on this plane this year. It's been loads of fun and a real privilege to be able to get involved in that. <sighs> Phase two of the street art was making the plane fly. So it kind of was obvious that it had to be in the sky. Thanks, Kathy. So these containers are pa painted like the clouds. I hope that's really obvious when you, when you look at it. <laughs> the fish. At the start of 2022, we were running three virtual production TV studios. That's cut down to one now, which is a really advanced one. And it's given the opportunity to turn spaces like this back into a fabrication facility. So the team can now make signage, set pieces and flight cases. And in 2023, we're very excited to be launching a flight case business where we make those beautiful black and silver shiny boxes for various customers. It's something I'm really looking forward to, having our own production line and seeing fantastic products leave this building every single day. This might not look like much of an achievement, but it does represent pitch getting out of this warehouse and into the new facility, which is a good thing. Now though, the opportunity is how we use this space in 2023. From what I'm feeling and hearing, Bristol needs maybe a new mid-sized production facility for film and TV. So imagine this, this space, uh, gloss painted black floor, double thickness wall drapes around the edges on track, blacked out roof, an anechoic chamber or close to for voiceovers and green screens and a production office. The idea is somewhere smaller than the big production facilities, but a bit bigger than the small kind of artsy studios. Do we think in the creative community that this would be a useful space? Would this contribute to the art, film and TV sector? If so, I'd love to do it. I'd love to hear from people, their ideas, get some collaboration on the go and really inform what the design and phasing development of this space is gonna be. And that might be a project we do in 2023. So if you've got some ideas, please get in contact. I would love to hear from you. 
From a technical point of view, this is the thing that's excited me more than anything else in 2022. What you're looking at is Bristol's biggest off-grid power station. Well, sort of off-grid. What we've got is loads of solar panels on the roof, which give us the energy we need to power the building. When there's excess solar, it goes into these batteries, and then these power the building. What that means is that we use very little, if any, grid power. We've disconnected our gas supplies and we heat the building with air source heat pumps. The result of that is that this company in this building is financially resilient because it's not vulnerable to energy price changes. It's zero carbon from an energy point of view, but most importantly, we're innovating in a way which I hope inspires other people like you to want to do the same thing. Off the back of this, I've now incorporated SoulCell, which is our renewable power company, with a vision to help other businesses become decarbonized and remove their vulnerability to energy price changes by installing systems like this. So if you're interested in renewables or you're in commercial property, please get in contact. I would love to show you this rig and maybe talk about us installing a power station for you. This time last year, I was sitting here saying how DB Cooper whiskey will be in any shop near you soon. Didn't happen, unfortunately. Turns out that COVID made bottle manufacture difficult, apparently. I could have got this bottle very quickly, or I could have got this bottle very quickly. The problem with both of them is you couldn't parachute holding one of these. It had to be this bottle. And after nine months wait and a bit of an increase in price, I finally got 1,100 of these things delivered. The whiskey's ready to go out in Wales and the labels are being printed. So fingers crossed, by my birthday in January, you'll be able to see DB Cooper whiskey on a shelf in a shop near you soon. Um, keep your eyes peeled and look at dbcooperwhiskey.com. Lunar Domes. This is a business me and my friend Dan Kenny have set up. The site's down in Kent. We're pushing up to nine domes now and we're achieving 60 to 70% occupancy, which is fantastic. But that's not the point. This business has always been about getting people outdoors who don't normally go camping, experiencing hot tubs in the woodland, eating outdoors and connecting with nature. It's been a real privilege to be able to give that experience to people who are normally used to luxury hotel accommodation. In terms of growth, 2023 is really exciting because we hope, fingers crossed, to be able to open our first West Country site. That's gonna expand our ability to do more of this great work and hopefully get up to 20 domes operational by this time next year. I'm really excited about it and hugely grateful for the opportunity to bring those experiences to a bigger range of people. This is the virtual venue. And if you've been following our social media throughout COVID, you would have remembered this is the space that we went nuts building in 2020. 2022 though, has been a year of maturation of this space. What's happened is film, TV and live events have all come together to start doing this new genre of creativity called virtual production. Let me explain how that works. This is a giant LED video wall and using media servers like Unreal or Unity, we're rendering volumetric 3D spaces to match what the camera would see in the real world. That's useful because people can get cars in here and replicate chase scenes, put people in forests, or shoot things like game shows, uh, podcasts, and even have cinema launches in this room. It's been really exciting to be part of that creative process throughout 2022. And special thanks to Tom Benoy, who has been the technical and creative lead on all of that. And I hope that the year ahead is gonna be more virtual production, more collision between creative disciplines to create better, more exciting, engaging, creative outcomes. There's been a lot of change to warehouse layouts in 2022, and that's given an opportunity to bring in a new tenant, which is Boom Satsuma. They're an amazing college for young people getting into the arts, creative industries, and broadcast. Having them on site has been an incredible synergy because we've been able to help them learn and also us contribute to their learning program. And I hope that in 2023, Skyline Park is gonna become a real center for production excellence and help generate the next generation of producers, technicians, camera people, and creatives in the media industries. This is the stables at Lee Court. It's an acquisition that I made in summer 2022 and it's really exciting and um, a bit scary as well. I've never had a listed building before and this is a big responsibility. There's nine tenants on this site and I've got to try and get this building back to being a really, really high quality space that people want to come to. So we're doffing the stone, which is a new thing, making sandstone come back to nice white, fixing some wrought iron gutters and refitting the inside of buildings. Trying to decarbonize, get rid of gas, get solar panels in and do landscaping. So. Um, as a property guy, it's a whole new sort of category of property, which is super exciting and hopefully will lead on to bigger things um, with nearby properties. Watch this space. But I'll take you inside and show you one of the um, offices that we've done up. This is stable one and it was the one year that was empty when I bought the place. 
When I got it, I had to rip out the suspended ceiling tiles, the carpet tiles, the laminate flooring. And what we're trying to do now is get it to an aesthetic that might have existed in 1814 when it was built. So we're doing a really ornate, detailed, coffered ceiling, um, panel, panelling around the walls to loosely Georgian proportions and a tiled floor. Alongside that, we're putting some quite clever tech in. Variable colour temperature lead strip to try and make it feel bright and fresh. That's quite energising as a workspace. And we've also already removed the gas supplies and put in air source heat pumps with ducted FCU to get the air where we need it. Again, in a way that's quite discreet and hopefully you wouldn't visually notice it, but the place will feel nice when you're in here. In hopefully a month or so, this will all be done. And fingers crossed, we'll have nailed it and we'll roll this aesthetic across each of the units as and when tenants move on and we refurbish the units. Um, an exciting project, lots of learning, which is, which is what I enjoy. Um, watch this space and pop on down and see it. This one will be for rent in about a month or two. That is 2022. It's been an interesting year, an exciting year, and there's still loads of challenges ahead, but generally things are okay. And I'm really looking forward to 2023. Lots of exciting projects. And here's a shout out, call to action. If anyone out there is doing a project, creatively, business, community, environmental, and needs some support or some involvement from me, please get in contact. You probably picked up that most of the business I'm involved in isn't really for money. I love the adventure and the creative process of business. So that means I really wanna work with people who are doing crazy things, exciting things, or things that change the world or make it better. If you're one of those people, please get in touch. And I'd love to have you around here to pitch air. For a cup of coffee and a cake, we can have a chat. And I hope to maybe see you in person soon.